Hello, Faith Bible Church. Welcome to today's word. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. We've been looking at the high five, the high five messages that Jesus told on the day before he was crucified. So uh, we're outside in my backyard. We even have some dogs barking in the background. So it ought to be interesting, but uh, I think you'll really enjoy this, this message. So the high five messages are, again, the five chapters, chapters 13 through 17, uh, in the Gospel of John, and this is the, the night before Jesus was crucified, and this is what he shared with the disciples. So chapter 13 is Jesus loved and served the disciples, and Jesus tells us to love and serve others. Uh, chapter 14 is Jesus offers peace to those who follow him. During this time, how much more peace, uh, wh what greater uh, asset could we have than peace? John chapter 15, it talks about how we need, Jesus told us to bear fruit as we abide in him. And today we're going to talk about John chapter 16. John chapter 16 is so imperative. It's where Jesus offers us the Holy Spirit. So he offers the Holy Spirit to those who follow him. And how much we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit who comes into our lives when we, when we come to Christ. We need the Holy Spirit as he baptizes us in a, uh, a beautiful experience after we have received Christ. And so uh, I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit today. Uh, before I do, uh, I want to encourage you with something, an illustration I thought of that was going to help you to understand the Holy Spirit's uh, activity in our life. So some of you may watch NASCAR, some of you may not. I used to watch NASCAR a lot more than I, I do now. A lot of my favorite drivers retired. Some of you think, well, NASCAR is just uh, making a bunch of left turns. But let me explain to you something about a NASCAR driver. All right, a NASCAR driver sits in a car and is very confined. Uh, he is wearing a helmet, first of all, which impedes his vision. He also has a couple of uh, head stabilizers around him, so he can't really turn his head very well. NASCAR drivers have no side mirrors or wing mirrors, they call them. NASCAR drivers also have a five-point harness on them, so they can't move their body. They can't see very well around them. But the NASCAR driver has something really interesting, and that is called a spotter. That spotter is perched up where he can see the whole track. He can use his binoculars and he can see what's going on. The spotter can see some, a lot of things that the, the driver cannot see. And so the, the driver really, uh, really leans on the, the spotter to tell him what's going on. The spotter will say, there's a car in front of you, there's a car next to you, there's a car behind you, uh, there's an accident uh, uh, ahead, there's a yellow flag, a red flag, whatever the NASCAR driver uh, needs to know, the spotter will tell him because of the lack of vision or view that the driver has. This, I believe, is a great illustration of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And Jesus tells us this in actually chapter 14, 15, and 16 of the Gospel of John. So I'm going to read you a few passages, and I'm going to tell you what Jesus said the Holy Spirit would do in our lives. And this time where we are uh, alone or in solitude or isolated from everybody else, how much do we need the Holy Spirit's help in telling us what's ahead, what's going to happen, how we can live our life wisely during this time? So let me read to you a few verses uh, in, the, in John 16, and then I'm going to read a couple in John 14. So John 16, the first passage that I'm going to read is uh, John chapter 16. We're looking at verse number, number seven. Jesus says this, but I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. 
And so he says the counselor, we're going to talk a little bit about that in just a moment. And then back in John 14, um, it's interesting what Jesus says about the Holy Spirit. Chapter 14, verses, starting with verse 15, if you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. What awesome passages of scripture. And what I would encourage you to do, read chapter 14, 15, and 16 of the Gospel of John and see how often Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit in these passages. So Jesus says he will send the Holy Spirit, the fourth, the fourth part of our five-part message. Uh, the Holy Spirit, there's a, there's a Greek word for the Holy Spirit that, John, that Jesus often uses in the Gospel of John. And the word is parakletos. Parakletos is such a rich term. It's such a full term. It's got overwhelming truths for all of us today. As we follow Jesus, how much more we need the Holy Spirit on a, on a day and time like this. Parakletos, you know what it means? Jesus said the Holy Spirit is the parakletos. He's the comforter, the encourager, the counselor, the intercessor, the advocate, the partner, the helper, the strengthener. That's who the Holy Spirit is to us. Do you need strength? Pray, Holy Spirit, fill me more today. I need your strength. Do you need, uh, do, do you need wisdom about future decision? Say, Holy Spirit, I need more wisdom. Uh, do you need help? He's the helper. He's the strengthener. He's the comforter. He's the counselor during this time. I want you to know a lot of us are isolated right now, but you and I are not isolated from the Holy Spirit. This is really important for you to know because although you may be alone at home or just with a couple family members, I want you to know you're not alone if you're a follower, follower of Christ because the Holy Spirit is with you. Chapter 14, verse 16. The Holy Spirit will be with you forever. You are not alone, friend. Chapter 14, verse 17. The Holy Spirit is with you and will be in you. Jesus says, once I go away, the Holy Spirit will not only be with you alongside of you, but he will live inside of you. This is so beautiful. Verse 17, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will teach us. Verse 18, the Bible says that Jesus will send the Holy Spirit and he will not leave you as orphans. Again, you as a follower of Christ are never alone. During this virus, you are not alone because Jesus said, I'll not leave you as orphans. I will send the Holy Spirit to be with you. And in verse 26, the Holy Spirit will teach you and remind you. Some of us need reminders of what, what we once lived and how we once lived. There, some of us need reminders of what Jesus said and taught. And the Holy Spirit can do that in, in our lives. In chapter 16, he says, I will send the Holy Spirit in verse 7. In verse 8, he says, the Holy Spirit will convict the world of guilt. Are you praying for someone to come to know Christ? Pray that the Holy Spirit brings conviction in their lives and draws them. Verse 11, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will reveal how Satan now stands condemned and will be judged. You know, you are a, a, victor, a victor in Christ. You have victory in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit can remind you, Satan loses in this battle. And Jesus is the winner. And he is exalted. And he has victory. And we are more than conquerors. Let the Holy Spirit reveal that to you. Chapter uh, 16, verse 12, he will guide you into all truth. Chapter 16, verse 13, he will give you insight into future events. We need wisdom, friends. We need, our country has never gone through something quite like this before. And so how much more wisdom do we need on the decisions we need to make? Holy Spirit, help us to make those decisions. In verse 14, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit, Spirit will bring glory to Jesus. I want my life to bring glory to Jesus. And it's the Holy Spirit inside of me that can do that.
I want to pray for you and I've got an exciting announcement afterwards. Uh, something I am so thrilled and elated about and I can't wait till Wednesday evening to be together with you, not under the same roof, but together with you in, in, in a very unique way. So let's, let's pray together. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit. I pray the, the, the ears that are listening here, uh, whether they're from Faith Bible Church or not, they would ask, God, send me more of your Holy Spirit, because that's what this chapter and, and is all about. It's all about you giving a gift of your Holy Spirit in our lives. So I pray for those who are listening, send your Holy Spirit into them in a powerful way so that they can live their life in victory for you. They can be empowered. They can be enabled to, to uh, uh, overcome temptation. They can be uh, enlightened with the future events that they need wisdom for. And they can be encouraged. That's your name, Holy Spirit, the encourager. So Holy Spirit, do all those uh, great things in your people's lives. Even during this time, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So what I want to do is uh, I want you to remember the high five messages of Jesus. And we will, re uh, we will go over them again uh, in our next message, next time we come together. But uh, one thing I want to tell you about is uh, there's a song, it's called Holy Spirit. And there will be a, a link on the bottom of your YouTube uh, uh, YouTube channel and so make sure you look up that uh, that song and it will encourage you as you listen to this message the last thing I want to talk to you about is Wednesday tomorrow evening at 6 30 excuse me let's start over tomorrow evening at 7 30 p.m. I want we're gonna have an interactive Bible study on a website that is called zoom we can talk to each other, we can see each other. Some of you might just wanna be on it without uh, being seen or being heard. You just wanna watch it, that's fine. But we practiced this a, a couple nights ago with just a few people and it went so well. It was so awesome to see the people of God's faces again. I didn't, I realize how much I miss you, but even that multiplied uh, how we miss each other. And so this is a way we can connect over the, uh, over the internet. It's called Zoom. If you have any questions, call me, text me, email me, and I'll make sure you get on Zoom. It is a great tool. And so I want you to read the book of Habakkuk. We're going to talk about the book of Habakkuk. And that is, it's a dynamic, thrilling book. But let's meet tomorrow evening, Wednesday, at 7.30, and uh, we'll meet together, and make sure you've read the book of Habakkuk before that, and you'll have some comments, and you'll have some insight into the book of Habakkuk. God bless you, keep you safe, give you strength, bless your family today, and I look forward to tomorrow night, Wednesday night, 7.30. We'll see you again. God bless.